Welcome. This is 49B6 and we're going to talk about the speed of a wave on a string, a, a tight string, a, a taut string it's called. I'm going to talk about its physicality, which is what physical parameters uh, determine the speed and, and what's the relationships. We did this a little bit before, just to remind ourselves, when we we're talking about uh, the natural frequency for an oscillator. Do you remember we said that omega was equal to the square root of k over m? And we figured that out basically from doing some math deri derivations and it made sense. And it makes sense to say, well, the, the uh, um, um, spring constant must have an effect and so should the inertial element, which is the mass. We're going to do the same kind of thing here. We're going to look at a wave going along a string. I'm showing it as a pulse, but it need not be. It could be anything. Uh, and it's going along this, this, this wire, this, this string. And at a beginning time, it's near the beginning. And then as time passes, it goes further and further down. We say consider the transverse pulse traveling on a taut string. Intuitively, we would expect the wave speed V to increase with the tension and decrease with strings mass per unit length, uh, which we call mu. Uh, and in fact, if we work out the equation, and it's, it's not proven in the book, but if you work out the equation, V is equal to the square root of T. And this is not period. Again, this is one of these things where we ran out of letters having unique values years ago. And now it's just T stands for tension, not period. So this is tension. And this here is mass per unit length. And again, if you're doing this by handwriting, make the T look different. Make it a different kind of T to the one you used for period. So you won't get confused. Um, okay, so it's a new equation and we haven't proven it, but we can, we can at least validate it to some extent by looking at dimensions or units, if you like. So if I look at this and I can say, well, tension, tension is a force. So that would be in kilogram meters per second squared. Remember, F equals MA. So there's my force and there's, there's, there's my mass and there's my acceleration. And then I have this divided by a mass per unit length would be kilograms over meter. So I take this and I say kilograms meters over second squared. Then I take this and I flip it, of course. So I get uh, meters goes on top and kilograms goes on bottom. And that gives me uh, kilograms goes away. And I have uh, um, uh, meters squared over second squared. And if I want that to be meters per second, I'd better square root it. <laughs> So the square root comes in to make, uh, if I square root that, I get meters per second. It doesn't prove that it's right, but it proves it's dimensionally legitimate. Yeah, there could be, a, could be a number seven in front of here. There could be a number nine in front of there. I don't know, but it makes sense. So, and then let's do one. So we say, what is the speed of a transverse wave on a string that has a tension? So here's my string. We tend to show the string with the tension by having like a, a mass hanging down. It's kind of like the traditional way we show it. And um, then this tension T is equal to eight newtons. And then we have mass per unit length. Notice I don't tell you it's mu. I just tell you mass per unit length is four kilograms per meter. And then I want to know what the velocity is. And so if you know your equations, this will recall, oh, V is equal to square root of T over mu. And then we can turn around and say, oh, V is equal to the square root of eight over four, which equals the square root of two. So V is equal to 1.4 meters per second. So that works out nicely. Let's stop for just one second and say, if you were a teacher and you wanted to make this a bit more interesting, what might you do? And one thing I could do 
is I could tell you that mass. I could say it's so many kilograms and then have you figure out what the tension is. And then the second thing I could do to make it a bit more interesting is I could say, oh, you know, this piece of piece of wire, if you had a hundred meters of it, it would be uh, so many kilograms, 20 kilograms, and then leave it up to you to work out what the mu is. So I can make you work a little bit harder for it because that's the way life is. You know, you don't look at a piece of wire and it says, oh, my mass per unit length is such and such. You gotta mass it. And then you gotta measure how long it is. So I can make it a bit more interesting. But there we have it.